In today's video, we're going to discuss signal processing. And so let me show you why this is important. Let's say we have some data that looks like this. If this is our axis and we have our signal and there is some high frequency noise that's riding on top of our primary signal. Now visually, we can see that our signal should look somewhat like this, but because of that noise, we might miss smaller features. And so one workaround is to use a technique called signal processing and we can find a lot of signal processing methods in the SciPy library. And so here you see this page called signal processing under the SciPy signal modules. And so there's techniques for convolution, using B splines and filtering. And so in this case, we want to use the Savisky Gole filter. This is a very common technique for the type of data that I'm often working with. And so the way this works is that once we import SciPy or if we need to, we pip install SciPy, we then can import the SciPy signal module and the Saval filter. When reading this documentation, the data we will imp input is the X value. And so this is some array. This could be a list, this could be a data series. You'll see how we will leverage this. And we would also then specify the window length and the polynomial order. The window length is the window area where the polynomial fit will be determined. We will then also specify the polynomial order and this will be computed within that window length. And so there's lots of ways that you can severely improve or detriment your filtering. There's other arguments like the derivative or in the delta arguments, um, but these are just things you can, you can play with and see if they actually help or harm your filtering. So let's jump into the notebook. Here we'll import NumPy and Seaborn to generate and visualize the data. And as you just saw, we're gonna use scipy.signal and import savgol filter to actually do the data filtering. Next, we will generate our raw data. So we're gonna use um, 100 data points and we're going to equally space them between zero and 50. And then we're going to generate our primary signal called Y um, as the sign of this X space. Next, we will create a variable called noise that we will actually add to Y using the random method, again, with 100 data points and just making sure that the mean is around zero to help with the visualization. And so let's take a look at what our signal looks like using the Seaborn line plot. And so here you can see we have a sinusoidal signal. If we show what our signal with noise looks like, you see that now we have this jagged figure in red that represents our noise. I'm also in using an alpha parameter just to make it a little bit more translucent. We're gonna set the color to red and use this dash just to ensure it's, it's clear to see from our primary signal. To use the Savgol filter, it's relatively simple. We just pass that method name and you see the documentation here is very similar to the documentation that we just saw on the primary page. And so in this case, X will be Y plus noise. So we're we'll actually just passing that feature. And what we will primarily focus on is the window length and the polynomial order. And so to make it clear where these variables are, well, let's just make a new variable called window length. And let's set that equal to three and poly order that we will set equal to one. And so now we set up our filter. When we run this, we will get an array output. This is the filtered data. So the, the data that's gone through our Savgol filter. And what we really wanna do is plot this data so that we can see how it improved or did not improve our overall signal. So I wanna use these two points as a reference and add that here. And let's save this value as Y filter. And let's copy this here, make a new plot called Y filter. Let's change the mark, let's change the color to green. And we'll keep the alpha at 0 0.5 just to ensure that we can see all of our signals and run this. Okay, and so with this, even with a relatively small window and a, a sort of weak polynomial order, we actually have already significantly improved our signal. So all the jacket is observed when we added the noise has already been removed using these initial conditions. 
let's look at what happens if we apply a polynomial order of three. And so we get a, a value error. So it shows that the polynomial order must be less than the window length. And so this is one of those parameters that you must be mindful of. If we were to examine the documentation more closely, we would have seen this limitation. And so let's just set our window length to five. And so we continue to see some of the smoothing of the data. Let's go crazy and set the polynomial width or the window length to 25. And so with the window length that's way too big, we've begun averaging out most of the detail we care about because we're averaging many more points together. If we set a crazy large polynomial order to 13, we have reestablished some of that, but now you really risk artificially changing some of the data and missing some of those features. And so I tend to err on the smallest window length that's important, as well as the smallest polynomial order, particularly when it comes to how a lot of these edge points are handled. There are arguments in here that you can use to manipulate that, but this is just one case of how you can begin filtering the data to improve or remove some of the noise off of that signal, particularly if it's high frequency noise. If you enjoyed the video, like the video, comment. If you want to see more, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.